Okay, today's guest has a warning for people investing in gold, silver, cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, just overall investors. And he's someone that I've actually known for, for many years. He's one of the most successful business friends that, that I have. Someone that, you know, big companies pay him a lot of money to help them with e-commerce and online branding and personal branding. And so we were recently reconvening and we were talking all about gold and silver and Bitcoin. And we we're talking about, you know, how we both put uh, a lot of effort into building these gold, silver, and, and in Mark's case, even more crypto on top of gold and silver portfolios. And Mark's basically a wizard at making more money. And I've said on this channel many times, I think people are underestimating the importance of building additional sources of income, especially income sources that are lockdown proof, government proof, and can leverage the internet. And this is super important, especially as the purchasing power of the dollar continues to go down. $60,000 just won't do it anymore. And so we've got to make more money and build other sources. And Mark's, you know, one of the experts kind of teaching businesses of all kinds doing that internet branding, things like that. And so I'm actually also going to be doing a free online event with with Mark on the 24th coming up where he's going to explain all of this in a lot more detail and the links right there down below that you'll see in the description in the comments for the 24th. So without further ado, hit the like button on this side or this side right over here. Leave a comment down below that says multiple sources of income, multiple sources of income. And uh, that's how we kind of judo chop the great reset. Would you agree with that, Mark? 100% brother. I appreciate you for having me on. Yeah. So, um, let me ask you, what do you think on the subject of what I just said? Like, I guess just jumping like right into it. So do you agree with me? I, I told you I had Mark Moss on recently, super yeah. brilliant finance channel guy. And he said, you know, I'm going to surprise you. And what I'm going to tell you is most people's biggest problem is they don't make enough money. They don't have additional sources of income and they aren't using business. Right. Do you agree that that's something that is probably the most important? Yeah, 100%. You and I were talking before this and we were just saying how sad it is and how it hurts our, our spirit, our energy and our hearts to see people struggling because you know, a lot of people weren't ready for what has happened in the world. And so many people have been impacted by this. You and I are both talking about every day, how grateful we are that, for years, we've had business models that have allowed us to work anywhere in the world, which means from our home if we choose, and also be able to make seven figures, millions of dollars, while also working from home or anywhere in the world with low overhead, low expenses, and a small team. It's a pretty good deal when you think about the world we live in right now because it's all digital. And you know what is sad is that you and I have been screaming at the top of our lungs for years how important it is that you make money from home, you make money online, and that you're not tied down to one source of income. And so that's what we're going to talk about today is how you can actually diversify your portfolio of income streams so that you can invest in a lot of smart ways. You know, I have clients that are billionaires. I have clients that are nine figure earners, eight figure earners, seven figure earners. And I even work with people who are just trying to get started and figure out how to make money online. So, you know, I'll let you steer the ship here and we can talk about this in a lot of different ways to make sure people are protected and can make more money. So you're kind of like what your business really is, is you have a consulting firm that basically teaches either done for you branding where your team does it or people pay you for consulting type of fees and then they their businesses go do it on their own and personal yeah. branding is kind of your niche and I was thinking recently especially as we're moving more and more and more online and people are losing their jobs whether you're in coding or whether you are like a, 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 a digital marketer or you are someone that is a natural path building the digital component of whatever you're doing. There's this guy that has a chiropractic channel and he has like millions of subscribers and he's just some guy that had a clinic and he started putting little crappy videos up, you know, in his clinic online. Would you say that that's like kind of one of the most important things in the future is personal branding? So why don't you get into why you think that and, and kind of some of the ways that our people are missing about how to leverage the internet for their businesses. 
Yeah, man. So there's a lot of meat on the bone here that we could talk about. And so I'll do my best to kind of segue into the conversation here from a top down, meaning start conceptually, getting people to understand what is personal branding? Why does it matter? Do I have one? Do I need one? And so, you know, yes, the chiropractor genius. Um, I work with people in 50 different countries around the world and a hundred different niches, verticals, industries. And I've yet to find really anybody who we can't find some way to leverage our strategies and principles around what we refer to as personal branding, which really just means you have a reputation. That's another way of putting it. People know you. Some people like you, some people trust you. And my belief is that the people trust you are the ones that are going to do business with you. They're going to refer to you. Um, the people who know you is a good start. And that's what you've done so well at that is you've built a channel. You've gotten lots of people to know who you are through content. And that's what it really starts with is you've got your personal brand online and you've got your personal brand offline. The problem is, is most people, they don't realize how to grow their personal brand online because it's the most scalable because it's very difficult for you to go and shake enough hands. And in today's world, you're not supposed to be shaking anybody's hands. You're not supposed to be meeting anybody or networking. Archie says you can never shake hands again. Uh, okay. So my point made is networking in person is much more limited nowadays. And so you need to learn how to build your brand online. And for me, you know, what I've come to realize is most customers are making decisions to purchase on the internet, especially now businesses are scrambling to figure out how to make money online. So whether you're in finance, whether you're in health insurance, whether you're in real estate, whether you're a broker, whether you're a full-time investor, it really doesn't matter what you do. I've already worked with people in all of those industries and a hundred more. And what I've come to realize is I don't care if you're B2B or B2C at the end of the day, it sounds cliche and stupid, but you're human to human. It's another human making a decision on the other side to buy from you, to work with you or not. And at the end of the day, where are the most humans spending their time? On the internet and on social network platforms. And the, the stats are, depending on who your demographic is, you've got people that are spending multiple hours a day checking their smartphones hundreds of times a day. And those are all opportunities that you could be in front of them. You got to understand there's billions and billions of people that are consuming content on the internet. They're consumers, billions, not millions with a B billions of people are consuming content on the internet. If you haven't made the shift to creating content, for the billions of people consuming content, you're missing out on millions of dollars that could easily flow right into your bank account. And that might sound like a big number. So let me just say this. You're missing out on $5,000, $10,000, $20,000 a month. I'll make it a smaller, more realistic number for you, even though millions is realistic for Jake and I. You're missing out on hundreds of thousands of dollars a year that could be flowing into your bank account because you haven't committed or you don't yet know how to make the shift and to become a full-time creator of value and content on the internet. Jake has, I have, we both have learned how to make millions. And again, I'm keeping it very conceptual and I'm going to keep bringing it in intellectually. Like what's the first step? What's the second step? Um, but I know we, we're going to do more trainings together to really help people because this is something not only you've done, but you're also passionate about and it's given you the life that you have and the capital that you have to be able to make investments. And that's really what we're going to tie this into here for the investing channel is like, how does this help me make money so that I can have more money to invest in gold, in silver, in Bitcoin, and all the other opportunities that are currently available? You and I don't just make money from investing. We make money from our personal brand, our online business, because we know how to create content, value, and products that billions of people on the internet are currently to, are consuming. And so the, the, the uh, conceptual idea is you need to make the shift from being a consumer to being a creator. That's the first shift. Understanding that your personal brand is one of the best ways to play that role. People would rather follow an individual like you or me than they would a business because it drops the barrier to feeling like I'm going to get sold. Why would a company create content? And if a, co if a company does create content, it's by another human and you're going to connect with that human because people don't have relationships with businesses. They have relationships with people. And so a person is an extension of a business. 
Some businesses pay celebrities and influencers to be that person. Other individuals like you and I who have small businesses have learned how to be the, the extension of our business brand in the form of a personal brand. If you know me, like me, trust me, you're going to be much more likely to consume my content consistently, which is going to build a deeper, more meaningful connection and relationship with my customers and prospects. And they're going to be much more likely to take your opinion, your influence. If you recommend something, they're going to be much more likely to buy it. An extreme example is Oprah Winfrey. Anything she recommends, people are probably going to jump on and buy at least a couple hundred thousand are, and that's going to generate millions and millions of dollars in sales in a day, which is why Oprah is known as like, if she just blesses your company, your product, service, or you, you're instantly rich overnight. And that's an extreme example, but you need to become what I call the mayor of your town. You need to become the mayor of your town. And so you can look at that as a, re as a reality or you can look at that as a metaphor. If you're trying to be the top chiropractor, you need to become the mayor of chiropractor town. Everybody interested who's a potential prospect who has the problem you solve, that's the key. What problem do you solve or do you want to solve? Then you start to create content and a personal brand around that. So when people have the problem, they think of you. How do they think of you when they have the problem? Because on the internet, you have thousands of videos and blogs all, and that's a big number. Over years, you'll have that many. You'll start making one video a week, one video a week, one blog a week, and it will provide value that solves a problem around the thing that you have a service around. And if you don't have a product or service yet, then you can build your audience first, and then you can ask your audience what products and services they would like to buy. You could either go get an affiliate product, a joint venture product, or you can create your own product, or you can beta launch a product. So the big problem I see is people have products and services, they don't have enough customers. Can you relate to that if anybody listening right now? Do you have a product and a service and you want more customers? The answer should be yes. So everybody who already has products and services, what do they want? More customers. So if you don't have a product and service yet, I'd rather teach you through personal branding and becoming a creator instead of a consumer, how to create content that builds an audience of potential future customers. So when you're ready, you have a giant pond filled of hungry fish. All you gotta do is drop in a hook. And personal branding in a nutshell is that. What problem do you solve? How do you wanna show up to be the person that's known for solving that problem? And you do that by creating lots of valuable content on different social networks that your audience currently hanging out on and consuming that content. You're stepping up and becoming an imperfect creator of that content to step in the ring and say, I'm here to serve you, to support you. And I'm gonna do that in the form of interviews, summarizing best-selling books, creating my own content, reviewing other products and services in the industry. I'm gonna do everything I can to show up and solve this problem in a fun, playful, creative, entertaining, educating way with my own unique personality as my personal brand showing up and doing that, that's gonna turn some people off, it's gonna attract some people to you, but you're gonna slowly build a tribe and a community and that's where you're gonna make your additional capital by being able to then serve them with products and services through affiliates or through your own that you decide to create. It's a lot that I just shared um, and now we can kind of segue into smaller conversations. Yeah, man, you, you definitely know, you definitely know what you're talking about. There's, a, I was taking as much notes on, cause there's so many things that ways that I could have responded with a different question and go this way and go, and go this way. Cause you said a lot of interesting things. And I firstly want to say, I think people still greatly underestimate the value of a personal brand and they think it's only for select industries. Um, whether you could do it for coding. I mean, if you're a coder, you could make a coding channel and guess what happens when you become an influencer in that. Then a company that has a great software approaches you for 20% ownership for you to come on on the development phase and kind of be a fi figurehead, right? And you can apply this to every single thing. Like pretty soon I want to buy at least a cabin in North Idaho. That's like my doomsday cabin. And I already know who I'm going to contact for it because he has a really cool YouTube channel about, about Idaho, Idaho real estate. And he's just like, Hey, what's up? You know, I'm your, I'm your local Idaho real estate guy. They're, my number's right there. Just text me. I'll answer right away. Like his real personal number. It's not like an automated system. And so you start thinking like this and whereas maybe 
you didn't consider it before when then you look at the, at the totality of our situation, which is they're pushing us into digital everything, digital currencies issued by the government. Um, everything's on the internet. We're on zoom people that worked in office, their whole lives can't work in their office. I mean, you've got some of these people saying, even after a vaccine, you're still not going to be able to go back and do this and do it. And it's like, we'll see what happens. And there's a lot of hoopla there, but it's obvious that we're being pushed into an environment where a lot of old jobs are going to be obsolete. Um, and you can do it for everything with gardening. So that, so I took a couple other notes. And so, and I wanted to tie this into th what a lot of the content that I talk about 80% of the interviews rather that I talk about are about gold, silver, um, investing, uh, Bitcoin, um, and, and Mark Moss talked a lot about business, which was super interesting. And so I thought about how does this pertain to my niche? I mean, me, first of all, I tell everybody in my interviews, I'm like, look, I'm not like some investing genius, like the people that I interview. Like I really just like have a good business and I, and I am, and I'm comfortable putting a lot of, of my net worth into something and I'm investing in a trend. And like, I'm not like this guy that's like, here's the PE of this company. And like, it's not, not, you know, really me. Um, yeah. But I was still in, I only started this channel in April. So I established a brand in a niche and it's presented companies that want to give me private placement deals where let's say their stocks, two bucks, they want to give me an offer in at $1. So I immediately have more money from it. So there's those opportunities. And then I thought, well, what's my largest holding in my investments for a stock? And it's a silver company called First Majestic. I own that company because they have great financials. They had record profit in Q3. But I really own the company because I really like the CEO. The CEO is the personal brand of that company. And I was trying to, and I was trying to tell him on an email. I, and when I talk to him again, I'm going to pitch him harder. I'm like, dude, you guys could crush the internet for metals investing. You know, you're, you're a good talker. People love you. You've got one of the biggest brands out of any, you probably, he probably has the biggest executive for an executive of mining company. His name's Keith Newmeyer. So I bought that because I fell in love with Keith. I like his attitude. Like I love everything about the guy as someone that I trust with my money. Um, so I bought that because of a brand. And they're still, they're leaving 90% of it on the table. If they took all of these content marketing things more seriously, they could have, you know, an, an extra 100,000 people that fall in love with Keith a year and want to invest because they love Keith. And then I thought about Rick Rule. Do you know who Rick Rule is? The name sounds very familiar. So Rick Rule's one of the most successful gold and silver investors in the world, made hundreds and hundreds of millions. And um, someone that I have on this channel regularly. So you know, he's like a legend for people that are like real gold mining bugs. And Rick told me on our last interview that um, I will make more money from my personal brand in this industry than I will from my investments, even if it's the best investing cycle ever. And I, and I said, and I literally said, I said, really? Like, come on, dude. I'm like, what about like gold and uranium and silver stock? And he's like, no, you're going to make way more money, way more from your brand. And he said that I've made way more, more. I've made all my money from my brand too. People obviously pay him a bunch to speak, but then people give him these epic financing deals because they want Rick Rule's name. They want his name because it carries weight. People put their money down when they hear about the personal brand of Rick. And so you start to think about it and it exists for every industry. Um, and even if you don't, because then people are like, well, I don't have anything to sell. Well, you actually don't need anything to sell. You basically just have to find something you're passionate enough about to make content in it. And that's what I did. I don't talk that much about myself on this channel because I do more interviews and I'm ranting right now though. And, you know, over the last, as you said, 10 years, starting with a self-published book when I was 21 and building, you know, a, an, a, an online brand worth a lot of money where sponsors, whatever it is, want to pay me a lot. And I've turned it into something. It's actually all happened. Getting a book deal with Penguin Random House when I was 22 years old and they were paying me a bunch of money to write a book after I dropped out, like all that actually happened. Um, because I made free videos on YouTube about a certain niche. And my niche was personal development, philosophy, spirituality. 
and I just made videos. I didn't say in the videos, they weren't like, hey, buy all my stuff, guys, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. I didn't even talk about my stuff. Maybe at the very end, I was like, by the way, I wrote this new book. The link's right there down below if you want to check it out. And that's what made me so successful was the content marketing. Um, would you say that that's the most, because that's how I found Keith. That's how companies contact me for sponsorship. Would you say that content marketing is the number one thing? And in addition to that, um, how can someone that's listening that is like, you're right. And maybe they lost their job or whatever, or maybe they just see they could be more valuable in their marketplace or niche or to their employer if they become an authority in the space, which also can include just interviewing other authorities, which is all I did in the metal space. So, uh, would you say that that's correct? And I was kind of ranting. I said so many things, but like I wrote so many notes about what you had to say because I was like, Oh, Rick said that. And I bought this because of Keith. And I like, and I never really thought that I bought my, my first majestic because of Keith. But when you put it in that way, yeah, I did. It's because I love Keith. Yeah. And dude, I mean, I love everything you're saying because it reaffirms what I'm preaching and so passionate about, which is personal branding is such a powerful resource and strategy and asset. But most people who have any tool or resource in their closet, it's not going to be producing the outcome that it could if you actually used it, leveraged it, maximized it. And so, you know, you and I have personal brands. We've learned to leverage them. Uh, Rick has figured out his personal brand and is crushing it. And the people listening have a personal brand. They just haven't started leveraging it and using it. And so you got to remember, first and foremost, you have a personal brand. It's how are you going to be able to start to leverage it over the coming months and years to really capitalize on a trend that is still in the baby stage and has just now been more spotlighted for the world to focus on, which is how do I make money on the internet? So how do you do it? I know we're going to, for everyone listening to, like I said at the beginning, yeah. we're going to be going a lot of detail about this on the 24th. I'm going to do a live training with Mark and the links in the description right there down below. If you want to um, sign up to it, it's free and we'll go into more detail. But I guess for someone listening right now, like, how do you, like, I know you take you, you, it's way more elaborate than here. Let me tell you in three minutes, but like, <laughs> how do you, how do you start to do that? What is yeah. like the steps? So before I get into that, I just was thinking of other people's names that have influenced me, whether, whether people listening like them or not in the industry, but like Tika with crypto and his like top five picks. Um, yeah. Tika is like the guy in the crypto space who's like, you know, he recommends crypto coins and it goes up and spikes like crazy. Some of them are pump and dump, so it'll go up and then back down. But like Tika has a personal brand in the crypto space. And I bet that guy makes as much or more just based on his personal brand of recommending. I just saw he was selling like a $2,500 program purely based off of like, when you buy that, I'll give you my five picks. That's a powerful personal brand. Yeah. Um, another one, Dan Casey, right? He's like in the gold space for, for decades. Another example of a personal brand. So every industry has personal brands that are going to be influential and looked at as a trusted advisor. You were giving your example of Keith with um, the silver company. And I was giving Tika as an example and Dan Casey as an example and so many other role models and, and leaders I've looked at and bought stuff purely based on their recommendation, not even really doing as much research as I probably should have to do my due diligence, but purely because I respect that person and, and trust them so much that if they recommend it, I'm throwing 50 grand or a hundred grand on it. Just purely <laughs> based off, just purely based off the fact that I trust them so much. Um, it's funny so, how we work like that. Dude, it's crazy. And that's the power of a personal brand is somebody can yeah. just tell you, hey, I'm, I'm doing this deal if you want to get in on it. And I'm like, okay, um, <laughs> I don't even have time to have my attorney look at the contract. Let's just go, baby. Let's pull the trigger. Um, it's funny how our psychology is like that and, because, and how it's the way, tech, the, way the technology is too. It's going to capture more of that. Yeah. And that's just one example. That's just one example of, our, of how you and I have both made big investment decisions based off other people's personal brands in the industry. But look, your, your question just before I really just tear it apart um, was how does somebody get started with their personal brand in a sense? Okay. So first and foremost, to reiterate, you've got to figure out what the problem is that you're going to solve. That comes down to any business, any product, any personal brand, what are you going to do to solve a problem? That's how you make money in this world. You know, um, the timing couldn't have been better, bro. But I just had my amazing, that I'm so grateful to have, um, house cleaners just finished cleaning my house because um, I'm at my home office right now. Um, 
And so the house cleaners clean the house. I could hear the vacuuming and stuff going on. And I was like, oh man, I really hope it stops before this interview um, <laughs> begins. And it did, it was perfect timing. Um, but those house cleaners get paid whatever minimum wage, whatever the dollar amount is, we tip them very nicely. But they're solving a job that almost anyone is capable of doing. And so guess what? Because they're solving a problem of cleaning my house, that's a great problem for me to pay somebody for, but it's not a very big problem for me to pay a lot of money for. Like if I had brain surgery or back in 2018, I got a rare infection in the bloodstream called sepsis. It almost killed me. It kills one out of four people and one out of four people get sepsis die. I got sepsis. Wow. I almost died. I was wiped out for two months in the hospital, hooked up to machines, getting my blood purified and, um, vancomycin and all these antibiotics to kill sepsis in my bloodstream crazy life experience that cost me two hundred thousand dollars luckily i have medical insurance but you can imagine not working for two months and even out of pocket and all the other stuff it was very expensive because that was a life or death problem and so that cost two hundred thousand dollars to be in the hospital for seven days 200 grand. Um, then another 45 days of other expenses and, and, and seeing infectious doctors. So my point is housekeeping, minimum wage, life or death situation, or a brain surgeon or whatever, hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars. So the problem you choose to solve is very critical. So to, add, to answer the question, the first thing you start with is what problem are we going to solve? Then I like to say, who's already solving that problem that we can look at as a benchmark to do some R&D, rip off and duplicate, baby. How can I find, <laughs> how can I figure out what they're doing right so that I can then say, I'm just starting out, but guess what? All the car companies copy the same wheel. Somebody invented the wheel, but you're not stupid enough to try to reinvent the wheel. So you're going to copy it. And so guess what? Every car company uses that wheel. And so anybody else who's already solving the problem that you want to solve, you don't need to figure out how do I build a personal brand around solving this problem? Odds are someone already has a big YouTube channel, a big blog, a big website, a TV show, a magazine, a newsletter, uh, a program, a live event, a summit, a virtual summit, um, a Facebook group. Somebody already probably solves that problem. Your job is to go and do research and see who it is because my question I like to ask is who already has my customer? Who already built my following? And then I want to now be able to learn from that person as much as possible because they have probably years or decades of experience in the industry. So you can walk right into their um, industry and business and website and funnel and newsletter and get as much R&D as possible. So you know what problem you're going to solve. You already know who solves that problem and is a leader. You know that they have your customers and prospects so you can do your R&D. Then we want to figure out what your perception is going to be in the industry. Are you going to be the chill, laid back guy who solves the problem? Are you going to be the super professional suit and tie guy that solves the problem and, or gal? Um, how are you going to be perceived? And so for me, in my early career, I thought as a young person, I had to be perceived professional because I was young. So I would always wear suits and ties. And that was, of course, because I didn't have any money. So I had to project that I was successful. Now that I'm a multimillionaire, uh, I wear whatever I want. You know what I mean? Um, and I just am very authentic and I know who I am and I know my worth and I'm successful in my own right. And so for me now, I'm not trying to be successful. I am successful. So now I've shifted. I used to try to come off as the perfect I make no mistakes. I'm super successful guy. And I wasn't now I know I make mistakes. I know I'm not perfect, but I have achieved millions of dollars in net worth at a young age. And I'm extremely grateful. And now when I show up like on an interview like this or anything, I'm just authentically trying to help people. So me, I'm trying to be perceived as the authentic guy, not the perfect guy. Like I tried to be, which is impossible. Um, not the suit and tie guy, but just like, yo, this is the real me. I'm authentically showing up with my passion and energy to help you. So how do you want to be perceived? How do you, meaning, how do you want to be judged? Somebody quickly comes on this interview and they listen to it. They can be like, I can come to some quick conclusions about Mark. And I'm doing my best to make sure that those are the, the conclusions. The real estate guy for Idaho does a really good job of being perceived as just like this Idaho, like 
like manly man nature guy chiller and it's like i now that i'm i'm thinking through all my thought processes yeah yeah and that's what i liked about him so that's an interesting thing to say too and i've got to be aware of example well i'm just i never was i'm just thinking about what you're saying now and what were the unconscious things that attracted me to certain uh decisions that i made granted i haven't bought a house from the guy but i will if i if i do buy a house there and that's the point is like, as the person, you need to be aware how you want people to perceive you. Hmm. It doesn't matter if you're consumers, it's going to be under their radar. Most people aren't conscious of it. Um, And that's what great marketing and great branding does is it unconsciously conditions your audience that leans them in the direction that you want. And so what problem do you solve? Who already solves the problem to do some R&D? How do you want to be perceived as another person? Oh, great. Another person in the industry solving this problem. That's why it's so important that you come up with how you want to be perceived as the person because you're going to be, you're going to be different. Your personal brand is uniquely what you stand for, your values, your beliefs, and that alone separates you from the pack. So you just got to understand the world does need you. The world does need another person to solve that problem because you'll do it different. You'll do it special in a unique, special way, and you'll do it better because of some of those things. Some people will be attracted to you, others will not. That's the reality of any personal brand, business brand, product brand. Some people hate chocolate. Other people love chocolate. That doesn't make chocolate right or wrong. And so just know that you have a unique flavor. People are going to love your flavor. Others are not. So you just have to know right off the bat, when you get into the space, you're already special and unique and different simply because of who you are. That's what makes personal branding so amazing. There is nobody else like you. There can be people similar who can model certain language patterns, even look similar. But at the end of the day, uniquely who you are when you find your true self to share that online while solving that problem, that's what's going to make you stand out and be special. Some people love Gary Vaynerchuk. Other people hate Gary Vaynerchuk. Some people love Grant Cardone. Other people hate Grant Cardone. But they have their tribe and their following, and they found people who want to rep the same jersey as them. And that's what personal branding is all about, is you authentically know who you are, what you do, and the problem you solve, and you're just looking for others who want to rep the same jersey as you. And that's what you've done so elegantly with you, with all your different you know, personal brand and your channels and interviews that you've done. You're finding your tribe and your community. And those are the ones who hit that subscribe button. So if you guys are watching right now, hit that subscribe (laughs) button. Um, But you know who your tribe and your community is. And that's what's so special is like, you don't care when somebody sends you a hateful comment. You're like, thanks for not repping my jersey. I can appreciate it. Uh, You're you're obviously not on my team. Um, I don't need to try to convince you. I'm looking for people who, when they hear it, when they see it, they're like, we got the same jersey on. Me and Jake have the same jersey on. And so that's what you do. You find the problem, find somebody who's already doing it and figure out how you're going to do it a little different with a little different perception, a little different flavor and what makes you unique. It's the reason your friends love you. It's the reason other people love you. It's the reason other people have bought from you. And that's what we need to scale. We need to get more people to know who you are. And then we're going to do that through creating content. So how do we solve that problem? Creating content. What, what platforms is your audience hanging out on and who is your audience? So once we know the problem, we can then say, well, who has that problem? Who's searching for that solution to the problem? And then we can say, well, it's a guy named Jim, who's my avatar. He's 35 to 45. He wants to know how to better make money online and invest that money online. Great. Hey, Jim. Um, and Jim also only uses YouTube and LinkedIn and Facebook. He doesn't use any of the other ones. Great. So then I'm going to, if that's my avatar, I'm going to only make content for Jim on YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook, because that's where gyms hang out the most. And I can go on Google uh, analytics for free or YouTube analytics for free. And I can find that information out of who that person is, where they're hanging out and spending time. And it gives you that information for free because Google and YouTube and Facebook are advertising platforms. They just happen to be a a wolf in sheep's clothing. You think it's a social media network or a content network, but they're advertising platforms that have one of the best platforms in the world for free and billions of people use it and therefore they make money through ads. And so these companies will give you all the information about their customers. If you haven't watched the movie on Netflix or documentary Social Dilemma, you should. It basically just shows you all the creepy information that these platforms like Facebook, Google, YouTube have on us. And as a result, myself, um, I've learned how to go to these companies, get that information for free, and then I can create valuable content and give it away for free. It's a feedback loop. These platforms want you to create content 
They want to put it in front of the right people who want the content. And those customers go on these platforms because they want to consume the content. So these platforms will give you all the information you need for free to create the best ads and the best content so you can create on these platforms. Google doesn't work if nobody creates. YouTube doesn't work if nobody creates. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, none of those platforms work if nobody's creating content. So billions of people consume content. Only a select few have become successful at consistently creating a brand that provides value that solves problems in the form of content. And this is the beginning steps that you need to do to getting your personal brand online. And then if you want, I'm gonna throw it back to you. We can talk about some of my personal favorites different types of content to create to give away for free. Even if you're just starting out, even if you have no idea how to do this, you're not an expert, you're not smart, and you don't even have any knowledge or expertise to start sharing to solve a problem, how can this still work for you? Now, if you're smart, you do have expertise, this is gonna be a breeze. But if you're anything like me, when I got started, I was dumb, stupid, uneducated, and failed school. So how the heck am I gonna make money on the internet giving away advice? So I have advice for both people, the smart, successful people, who do have expertise, oh, this is a breeze for you and I'm so jealous, but you probably have 10 or 20 years of experience. I'm only 30 years old. So it's hard for me to have 20 years of experience because I didn't start when I was 10. Um, and so for the people out there who are like me and when you're somewhere on the journey, you're on chapter one and you're like, what do I possibly have to share? I haven't even read the book yet, great. And if you're over here and you're like, I have expertise and I'm twice Mark's age, um, Awesome. I'm going to be able to talk to both of those people, but I want to throw it back to you first, brother. Yeah, definitely a lot to take in there. And it really goes with my overall point or my overall thesis that I try to, I guess, put across on this channel. Like I really just made this channel because there's stuff I wanted to say, and I'd spent 10 years building my brand and my business, and I didn't want to insert my own economic and political views into my brand and my business that I had built. And you think about it. And I think the, e the quick, when you think about how do you build multiple sources of income, number one, probably the easiest um, and most fun is to build a personal brand. Um, and you can do it with anything. And that's, what's really, people don't realize um, you can do it with anything, whether it's chiro, whether you're a chiropractor um, or you are really into uh, fitness or you're really into health or you're really into yoga or you're like me and you're really into gold and silver, you can literally do it with any niche and you don't need a back end business, which is what's really cool because I mean, you could do it with parenting. Let's say you were 60 years old, you had five kids all your friends came for you to advice forever. And like, you just like have a really good relationship with all your kids and you feel like that's what you were really good at in this life. Um, you could make a huge parenting channel and you'd get paid eventually. If you had parenting channel and you did all the same steps by using SEO on titles and doing all the thing and you built a great channel, maybe you brought, had an interview segment where you brought on people that were struggling with parenting. You can make a lot of money from advertising deals and brand deals. And you can do that with anything. I mean, like one of the most, I think like the richest kid on YouTube, the richest person on YouTube is like a little kid that like makes Ryan, toy Ryan's things. toy reviews. Yeah. Ryan's toy <laughs> reviews. He, has, so, he has 25 million subscribers or more. It changes every day um, going up. And in 2019, he did $26 million in Jesus. revenue at eight years old. So all the, all, all that happened is he found a niche. He got a following. He produces content consistently and he did exactly the formula that I'm talking about. He was just one of the first people to do it. And he got in early enough that the algorithms favored him as one of the first people. He must have created good enough content that people liked it. He was consistent enough. And he, uh, he solved a problem. People go on the internet to want to know which toys to get. And he just carved a niche and he became one of the leaders in the space. But he started young enough where <laughs> he's only eight or nine years old now. And he's one of the top paid YouTube guys in the world. Yeah, I hate it when people say um, the, the analogy, they go like, um, you're not supposed to follow your passion. You're supposed to follow what's going to make you money because your passion might not have money. It's a very incorrect statement because <laughs> with the internet today, there's a niche for everything. I mean, there's yeah. people that make six or seven figures. Their passion is Harry Potter and they have some huge Harry Potter like 
fan club. I mean, or you can Pokemon literally... cards. That's like a huge trending thing again right now. Some people oh, have That's some people have some people have a million followers for Pokemon, and they just open up packs of cards and they make a ton of money. All right, let me tell you one of the smartest guys too that I think when you think about a personal brand, you know the Primal Kitchen brand, Mark Sisson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that Ashley grew up with. Uh, with the daughter and my wife group for those that don't know who Ashley is my wife's name grew up with the daughter and he was just always a fitness junkie. He worked in like some supplement industry, but like in his, in, in his, doing marketing or something, but he was always a fitness junkie and he just kept building it. And then he was like, you know, 60 with like an eight pack and he just like starts making content, you know, and he's just like, Hey, what's up guys. And everyone's like, geez, look at that guy. And he's like, yeah, I eat paleo. And all he did is just like make little workout videos and he'd make little recipes. Here's what I ate today type of thing. Okay. So that thing kept growing and growing. He built Mark's daily Apple, which is like one of the biggest health blogs on the internet. And then he diversified everything he did. He did books that sold, made buns of money and did all that. But um, what he did is he built a physical product brand, uh, Primal Kitchen, that is all sugar-free, like keto, paleo. And they do like everything from ketchups to red sauces to man- oil, uh, avocado, mayonnaise, like all these different um, salad dressings. I've, I've had their product. It's great. He sold that thing for like, like a half a billion dollars last year. Wow. <laughs> and like- that's the most extreme example of just making content about something you're passionate about. It's fun. It's a nice way to get away from all the craziness in the world. And if you do it consistently enough, that's why I say it's important to be passionate about because, you know, you, the, what I think one of the big differentiating factors in any niche on the internet is there are people that make really good content but they make it inconsistently. And there's people that make less good content, but they make it very consistently. And that takes off over the long period, which is, I fall in that camp. People make better content than me. They're way more better organized and all these things than me. But what I did since I was 20 was put content out along philosophy on the internet and people started buying all my books. And like, it was, it was that consistency of the content creation, but it exists in every niche. And this is why I wanted to bring Mark on because I talk kind of more esoterically about the importance of building multiple sources of income and side hustles and why you should build a new business. Um, But I don't like, I'm just, I'm not like as much as Mark's has like a consulting company that teaches things how to do it. And like, I'm not like a genius at all the ins and outs and stuff. And so that's why I wanted to bring Mark on. So some, because I made another video, the importance of building an additional source of income. So something a listener could consider is building an one uh, objective for 2021 could be building a personal brand uh, income source. So then the next question is like, well, what's something that you're passionate about that you want to make content on? And then, like you said, people don't realize last but not least that, and then I'll hand it back over to you that you said that um, YouTube is an advertising platform. That's why I never messed around with, I, I never messed around with Facebook and Instagram when I was building my my, uh, my other brand and selling my books and my, and being an author and all that. Um, because, um, YouTube was just better. It was just like, I just hop on there. Yeah. I talk about the shit that was interesting. I'd make it, yeah. you know, the content that the titles were what people were searching online. So it hit an exact niche and people like liked it and they found it and it made it so easy. And so it's like not super complex, especially if you don't have a back end because you could quite literally do it with anything, whether it was acupuncture, um, whether it was like you were, did all this stuff on studying and you were a psychologist and you treated people for ADD and ADHD, you could build a whole channel on productivity in that niche. And you just like go across the board and you could do it for everything. Like I said, the first majestic should have built the best YouTube channel on the internet for metals. Um, do, Do you, agree with what I'm saying. Um, and those are just kind of my running thoughts on, on, on what you're saying, um, that I kind of wanted to hash out my views as well. Well, 100%. And I appreciate you for sharing because it also gives people the reinforcement from a different perspective from hearing it from you. And, you know, one of my favorite examples to share, and we laughed about this earlier was, you know, to, to, to validate and prove that what I'm saying works in any industry that I personally, I've never found a space that won't work in yet is a sheep shearing contractor is somebody who's gone through our training for the free training that we're giving away. We're doing it live. Um, 
you know, I'm always adding and changing things, but he watched the same training and he was able to go and implement some of the strategies. And this is a sheep share in New Zealand. So this guy literally goes to farms and his little contracting business gets contracted by a farm. He goes there and he shaves the wool off of the sheep wow. uh, because I guess there's every season or something they need to get the wool shaven. And so this guy's a sheep shearing contractor. He goes to the farm and he shaves the wool. He wrestles the sheep. He sent me videos on it. It's hilarious. And then he shaves the wool off because I guess they need it. Long story short, this guy literally became the top personal branding sheep shearing contractor in New Zealand. And in the first six months of just creating content and following some of the other strategies that we teach in the free training, he was able to grow his business from $100,000 to $220,000 in less than six months. And this guy just became one of the top sheep shearing guys, the number one sheep shearing guy in New Zealand. So when any farmer is thinking, I got to find a sheep shearing, this is the only guy that you think of. He became like... <laughs> the go-to sheep share. And it's just crazy. And it's all from following these simple things. But like most things that are simple, like I think being healthy is simple because it's just small, consistent daily behaviors that compound over the, over the rest of your life or the end of the year. And I go, you're either fat or you're not. You're either skinny or you're in shape or you're muscular or you're not. Like that's from lots of behaviors, right? You don't just get fat overnight. You don't just gain muscle overnight. That takes lots of little behaviors. And usually- you don't just build this massive personal brand with a huge following overnight. It takes time, small, consistent behavior. And that's what I want everyone to understand here is like, if you understand what we're teaching, it's easy. Anybody can do it. I don't care if you shave sheep wool, like anybody can do this. Um, if you solve a problem and you follow the process that we're teaching, you can build an audience, whether it's a small audience of people like your local chiropractor or bagel shop, or whether you're trying to become the top mortgage broker in all of San Diego or wherever you are. We've helped all of these people with the same process. And again, I'm only sharing like the first couple steps of the recipe. There's a lot of different recipes to follow depending on the outcome, depending on the industry, depending on the product or service, or if you're just a beginner, um, which is why we have this deep dive training where we teach everybody step-by-step step exactly what they need to do. And it's much more comprehensive with slides and, you know, graphics um, because you can't do that in an interview. We're just kind of uh, playing hot potato here, going back and forth. But yeah, dude, I mean, let me know what else is the most powerful thing we could talk about for people because you and I both know one of the most powerful things we ever did in our life was build our personal brand, build an audience and be able to serve and support that audience by solving different problems for them, usually in the form of some type of digital, um, digital service. Um, for me, it's specifically education, programs, consulting, um, but we've been able to make millions of dollars and invest that into Bitcoin, into gold and silver and you know, I've talked with a lot of uh, investors in the gold, silver, and, and crypto space, and a lot of other investments as well. And a lot of them make all their money from their investments because they don't really make any or much money at all from what they do to generate income. They're just purely focused on their investing. And whether they're a day trader or whatever, or, they're, or like you and I talked about, they're sitting on the sidelines hoping and praying that the money they do have in, in crypto or in gold and silver is going to make them rich and they're going to be fine and never have to worry about money again. I hope that's the same scenario because I also have a very large portfolio of gold, silver, bullion, mining stocks, and, uh, and uh, crypto. Um, so I'm also hoping that it goes really well, but I'm not just sitting here hoping and praying and not doing anything. Every single day, I'm making money in my business, tens of thousands of dollars a day, and I'm able to take my profits and I'm able to invest that into more things. So I don't care if gold and silver takes off this month or next year or five years, because I'm just going to keep making money in my, my online digital business, which anybody can have an online digital business. It's lifestyle friendly. It's 100% pandemic friendly. And, it, <laughs> and, and you're able to do this from the comfort of your home, whether you're a total beginner or whether you're already an expert who's learning how to leverage their knowledge. I mean, I'm working with A-Rod, Alex Rodriguez, who's marrying Jennifer Lopez. He's a you know, MLB Hall of Fame baseball player. He's been on Shark Tank as one of the lead investors. A-Rod, Alex Rodriguez. And helping him launch his online education program because he's sitting at home like, I can't do what I normally can do. So I have all these celebrities all these influencers hitting me up, you know, from Jordan Belfort, the Wolf of Wall Street, to Manny Koshman, a real estate mogul, to Ed Milet, uh, one of the wealthiest entrepreneurs in the world, to um, A-Rod, Alex Rodriguez, entrepreneur and, you know, MOB Hall of Famer. Like, I have some of the biggest people in the world coming to me and saying, I need to figure out how to do this whole online thing. I need to figure out how to take my audience and grow it, multiply it, and be able to serve and support them through online 
digital education, a membership, a program, uh, online summit, and I'm helping these people in that way. Your, your way might be a different way that I would be able to help you and support you on the free training. We'll talk about all of that. Um, but I'm working with some of the biggest people in the world because influencers, celebrities, and everybody is stuck at home trying to figure out how to do this whole online thing and make money. And I have a line of the biggest people. I can't serve and support all of them because done for you is not scalable. I can't do it for all of them at the same time. But the online free training that we have is scalable and everybody watching can register for free and learn exactly what they can start to do as the beginning steps to be able to get started making money online from their home. Again, there's just so much to share. I need, I need at least two hours to do it and a proven comprehensive training that's less free flow and very organized um, that everybody can watch. And that's what I want everybody to do ultimately from this interview is like, let me spend some more time with you and really break down the comprehensive step-by-step -step process that you can follow that I've got a line of celebrities wanting me to do for them. Um, and I'm very selective. I named a couple of them that I'm helping right now. So when you see those people that I named, when you see them launching their stuff, some of them already have, you'll know who's behind it. I'm behind a lot of the biggest celebrity brands right now, launching online services, offers, summits, um, programs, memberships, because there's a formula and it works for celebrities and it works for total beginners, even if you're a sheep share. There's just a formula and a process. Billions and billions of people are consuming content. You gotta start to become a creator. That's the foundational essence of what I'm repeating here is, Billions of people are consumers. If you want to make money and get rich, you need to become a creator. Yeah. Speaking of that, I guess you could even do it for baseball. I mean, you could, you could have 100%. a, a, you know, let's say that you were a local, uh, for, for the kids in a, maybe in a wealthier area where the parents could pay a hundred bucks for a session and you taught the kids swinging, well, you could build basically a, me a mechanics and tutorial channel online and you could probably get brand deals with bats and glove companies and stuff like that too. So it's like, I'm, I'm it's, doing it with a hockey coach right now. That's funny. Yeah. That it doesn't surprise me. I, I was thinking earlier, I was trying to think of what is the most ridiculous business I could ever think of. And I couldn't think of it. Then you said sheep herding or whatever sheep, you said. Sheep sharing, sheep sheep sharing is one of the most I ridiculous. Meant. Another one is I, I have a, I have a really successful <laughs> client who does mud farms. So you want another weird one. Um, mud farms. And so how the heck do you build a personal brand around mud farms? And what is a mud farm? Well, oil companies need specific type of mud to go underground to separate the oil and rise it up to the top. This guy has one of those mud farms. He's very successful. He does about 50 million a year with mud. This guy sells mud. Um, and so we're building this whole personal brand around being the guy if you need the right mud. And it's we're making it like funny, but also professional. So it's like, funny that this guy sells mud, but also professional. Of yeah. Like, here's the process. Here's why our mud is better and, and more special. Just like the majestic silver guy. It's like, why do you want to invest in his silver company when silver is silver is silver is silver? So right. why, why choose him? Why choose this guy's mud over somebody else's mud? Because he's got that personal brand and you're like, I love this guy. I'm going to buy this guy's mud for my oil. Yeah. Company. That just proves my point that it's literally, it. and that's why I, you know, wanted to bring you on and want to talk about more. So obviously anyone that this, really speaks to and whatever marketplace or niche or, or, or occupation you have, I'm sure there's some leverage potential to it to grow your income, either to be more valuable to your existing company and you come to them with a plan or you're venturing off on your own with whatever. So the link is right there down below to sign up for it on the 24th. And I guess kind of in conclusion, um, I was thinking about what you were saying and then I was thinking, it didn't surprise me at all when you said, you know, everyone's kind of starting to like, it's almost like people are realizing that online real estate is really the biggest gold rush of it all bigger than yes. physical real estate or gold or silver, because you think about it and I make this channel and I talk about gold a lot and silver a lot and people call it real money. Right. Um, well, what's real wealth? historically the richest people in the world have actually always been the uh, people that own businesses actually. And so the wealth generator is a business and then the store of value from the capital that you save from the business is, you know, your real money and that's gold or silver. If you're in crypto or you like real estate more, it's storing a hard asset while they devalue the, the currency that your, that your business is hopefully churning out. And so it's kind of like an interesting way to think about it. And then when you really examine the future, 
everything going online, everything going on the internet, then you go, well, actually, um, Wealth Generator 2.0 is being able to add value um, on the internet. And if I can do that, then I hit Wealth Generator 2.0, uh, which will kind of be, well, that'll be uh, the name of our, of our uh, online <laughs> event we're doing. It will be Wealth Generator 2.0. Uh, uh, I love that. So for everyone listening, um, kind of, uh, we'll kind of wrap up here. Um, I know everyone kind of drops off around an hour or so. Um, so the links right there down below for the free event and, and Mark, I'll let you, uh, you say a few final thoughts or words or, or comment on my, on my little rant right there for yeah, the brother. wealth generator 2.0. <laughs> I love that. I love that. So yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll come to a conclusion with just simply reminding people and summarizing what we've talked about, which is you've got to first realize that one of the biggest opportunities in the entire world is happening right now. One of the biggest transfers of wealth is happening right now. And I believe one of those opportunities is you've got to get in the digital space. Like you were saying, digital real estate, online real estate is one of the biggest, most successful things ever. I, I know my grandchildren will be like, wow, our grandpa is a billionaire or a <laughs> cent a millionaire worth hundreds of millions of dollars because he got digital real estate. He got it. He built this huge audience, this huge brand. That leads to opportunities, that leads to investments, that leads to partnerships, it leads to everything. The Boys and Girls Club, right? You get in there because you also are a badass personal brand. It's just the way it is. I get phone calls, I get investment opportunities. I'm in a couple unicorn deals, the angel investments that I'm in, that'll have 100, 200 X returns. I'm already at like 45 X with one of them. It's because I got the calls from people that are like, yo, Mark's one of the guys in the industry. We want him in. And you start Which to get I guess these, just basically proves what Rick Rule said. He's like better than any investment that you'll ever Better than any investment is a you'll brand. ever build. And I was like, really, Rick? And he's like, I'm being dead serious. With it's, you. Because of, it's because of the untangible, incomprehensible, indirect things that happen as a domino effect is a weird way of wording it. <laughs> you, just, you just can't know <laughs> all the things that are going to happen. Yeah. Like I didn't know I was gonna suddenly have celebrity clients. Those celebrity clients lead to new celebrity clients that lead to connections to investments, that lead to invitations to galas, that lead to a, sitting next to a yeah, billionaire. That makes that sense, leads you to, never really know what, to, and that's kind of what happened. I just made this channel because I was, we were locked down in San Diego and I, this was before I moved out of California. And I was like, this is just getting stupid. And I was like, so I'm going to make a channel and talk to all these people that I'm investing with and I'm watching on YouTube. And then very quickly that led to, Hey, here, we want to give you a private placement deal. And, and you know, like that happens because of the indirect stuff. And it's only been a handful of months. Yeah, It's only right. been a handful. Of, it hasn't even been years compounded. Imagine in the coming years compounded, all of the amazing things that you'll yeah. have on this channel. So that's number one. You have to be aware we are in the most opportunistic time where everyone in every business is getting online. So the digital real estate boom is going to ex explode. You having the opportunity to build a personal brand online, that's the second part. So be aware there's a digital real estate boom coming. Everybody in every business is trying to figure out online. The good news is I've already figured it out for the last seven years and I've made millions of dollars doing it. Everybody's just now catching up and scrambling. Yeah. And I've been, I've been sitting here feasting. And so I'm like, welcome to the table. Um, <laughs> there, help yourself. There's plenty. Um, and so I'm very grateful that I've been able to teach my friends how to do this and make millions. I'm very grateful that I've been able to teach my family how to do this. And all of us are thriving in this crazy world. And I'm so blessed to say that. And that's why I'm so passionate about helping others. You don't need to sit back and get slaughtered from these things that are happening in the world and the government. You can be cashing in. You could be having an income stream that makes you money and lets you put it into these other things. So re realize it's coming, realize it's here, it's now. The second thing is I want you to also realize that regardless of where you are, your biography, your circumstances, you can still be successful with this. Don't worry about all the questions and uncertainty you have. We answer those on the free training and the masterclass we're doing on November 24th. So register for that now. And all of it will make sense at the end of that. Um, it's 100% massive value. You're going to have your jaw drop when you see what we're teaching on there and, and realize oh, they should be charging for this. I know I'm giving it away for free because I'm crazy and I already have enough money. I'm trying to help people and I'm teaching all my best secrets on this free masterclass. The next thing is you can be successful at this. You just have to figure out what problem you're going to solve. Who's already, who's already doing that. So you can learn from them and emulate what they're doing, figure out who your audience is, and then make the shift, commit to making the shift from being a consumer to being a full-time creator who's going to create content, 
create value, create education and entertainment online on the channels that you're passionate about. YouTube's a really great one, Facebook, LinkedIn, wherever your audience is hanging out. By doing this, you're gonna build an audience of people, small, medium, large, and you're gonna be able to survey that audience to find out what they want, and then you're gonna be able to go out and give, give it to them in the form of affiliate products, joint venture partnerships, sponsors, or even creating it yourself. It's a simple formula, guys. I'm giving you the elementary education, if you want the higher level doctorate level education, um, doctorate level education, you're gonna have to register for the free training um, because it's hard to go that deep down the rabbit hole without showing you visuals and graphics and step-by-step -step trainings and templates and formulas and scripts and fill in the blanks, which is all in the training you guys can register for for free. But I'll leave you guys with that. Amen, that sounds good. So uh, it's funny too, I guess in, in conclusion, it was, it was either this morning or yesterday, I had made a video and one of the steps that I talked about preparing for the great reset was building additional source of income or a business. And someone commented back and they said, like, basically, what stupid advice, how are you even going to build a business if they're going to, if the communists are going to take it all away from you or like something like that. And I was like sitting there and I was like, that's what that guy doesn't understand Maybe if you have a brick and mortar store, you know, they keep shutting things down, but that's what that guy doesn't understand about the internet. Um, and I, and I was sitting there listening to it. And so I, I guess you're kind of, you're kind of the answer to his prayers, I guess. Cause that was what I, yeah. it, when you said that, I was like, Oh yeah, I remember that guy said that to me. And so. hopefully that guy registers. Cause I'd love nothing more. <laughs> I'd love nothing more than for him to go and become successful and just like shatter his belief around that limiting story he's telling himself. Because, I don't know. He might not like me anymore after I gave that advice. <laughs> hey, that's fine. You know, some people are <laughs> going to be blind to it. And like I said earlier, maybe he's just not wearing the same jersey as us. And that's okay. It's okay to have people on another team cheering for something else and a different outcome or a different belief or viewpoint or model of the world. That's okay. Um, but if you guys resonate with what we're saying, you think you're repping the same jersey, you guys want to learn more, you want to make money on the internet. Um, clearly, we figured it out. This isn't some outdated information. I'm not some no disrespect, but I'm not some 50, 60 year old who made all of his money already and is now teaching outdated information. Like some people we're young. We know what's working right now. It's making us millions of dollars at a young age. And what pisses me off is when I see millionaire 16 year olds and broke 50 year olds, I see millionaire yeah, 16 year olds and broke 50 year olds because the broke 50 year olds won't make the change. They won't make the shift. They won't grow up and become a life experience adult to make the shift and be like, you're not too old. You have the opportunity of a yeah. lifetime in front of you. You can learn if a, I say this loosely, but if a dumb 16 year old can figure out how to make millions on the internet, there's no reason why you shouldn't, but it's your story. It's your limiting beliefs. It's your inability to make a pivot and a change that's been holding you back. There should not be a well-educated life experience, business experience, broke 50 year old and a millionaire 16 year old who figured out TikTok. That shouldn't make sense, but it's unfortunately the reality we live in. And, and I'm stuck in the middle. I'm 30. So I'm like right in the middle of, right. And so it's like, look, it's easy. There's a formula, there's recipes. There's a lot of different ways that you can make money on the internet. Um, I'm just sharing with you some conceptual ways of how to do it with your personal brand, but we can help you with all the different ways of making money online. I shouldn't say all, but like the core primary ones that people love that don't take a lot of time, have a lot of strategy systems and leverage. So you can make money while you sleep. doesn't sound real for some of you. I make money while I sleep. Jake makes money while he sleeps. It's real. Um, you just have to have systems and leverage. And so I personally like to teach ways of making money online that require very little of your time because it requires you to be smart and leverage systems, which we're going to talk more about in the free training as well. Good stuff. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the like button as always on either side, right over there, right over there. And like I said uh, at the beginning, leave a comment down below. This is multiple sources of income, multiple sources of income. And uh, check out the free training in the link right there down below on the 24th. Thank you for joining Mark and uh, thanks for listening, everybody.